is CGTN, China Global Television Network. The holidays are approaching, and like most things this year, it will be far from normal due to COVID-19. Families everywhere are struggling to make plans while conscious of the pandemic, forcing some to cancel their traditions or rethink their plans. For millions of families across Africa, the festive season is always something to look forward to. It is a time of reunion that ushers in a spirit of togetherness and sharing. Retail chains, as well as the travel and tourism industry, also experience a booming business. But all that has changed in 2020. This week on Talk Africa, we look into how people are coping with the COVID-19 containment measures, how these measures will impact the upcoming holiday gatherings, and also how they will redefine the future of travel. I'm Beatrice Marshall. Welcome to Talk Africa. The coronavirus pandemic has brought the travel and tourism industry to a near standstill with no clear sign of when it will recover. For a long time, Egypt has been a top destination for tourists who flock to the sunny Red Sea destination to escape cold winters. But as Yasser Hakim reports from Cairo, this year could be a lot different. Let's take a look. The Christmas and New Year season should be a busy time for everyone in the tourism industry. But the COVID-19 fallout has hit the tourism industry hard. Hotel occupancy rates in Egypt have dropped by 85% since April. And Mohamed Qaoud, who owns a travel agency, he says the festive season won't be much better. Christmas and New Year, it's, uh, it's one of the biggest festivals and holiday seasons for the Egyptian market. Uh, nevertheless, due to the COVID-19 crisis, uh, we have seen like a uh, dramatically fall in the demand compared to last year. We uh, have worked like together as an industry on how we can cope with the current challenges. And from there, we start focusing more on the staycations uh, and promoting the different gem destinations of Egypt for the uh, local Egyptians to enjoy the beauty of their country. Egypt has a population of 100 million people and experts say only strong purchasing power could push occupancy rates up to 50% during the holidays from the current 20 to 25%. This could partially sustain the hospitality industry till the return of foreign visitors to pre-COVID levels. 2019 has been a record-breaking year for tourism in Egypt, attracting over 13 million tourists and income that exceeded $13.2 billion. Despite the gloomy outcome for 2020, Qaoud is optimistic that things will improve going forward. With the good news of the, that they managed to secure between 94% to 95% from an effectiveness of a vaccine, we definitely see an increase in the demand starting from Easter 2021. So by 2021, we'll slightly see an increase in the demand and hopefully we'll get to the same figures of 2019 by 2023. We are as well opening new destinations as well and increasing the airlines routes to another uh, country so we can penetrate new markets for Egypt. So for now, it's all about getting prepared for an expected revival in this vital sector of Egypt's economy in 2021. Yasser Hakim for CGTN, Cairo. And now let's bring in our guests joining us via Zoom from Nairobi, David Owiro, the Executive Director, Africa Development Think Tank. Uh, in Cairo, Mohamed Hamdi, General Manager, Dominant Travel, and in Lagos, Femi Lawson, CEO, Skyview Communications. Thank you all for joining in the discussion. Uh, David, the festive season is finally uh, upon us, and uh, normally we tend to celebrate with family, with friends, uh, you know, the yearly tradition of the celebrations, but this year the world is still facing a pandemic. How is the pandemic affecting the festive season this year? What are your projections? Uh, thank you for having me. Um, we know since the global pandemic came, came in, um, you know, it, it's had quite a devastating impact on not only economic activities in general, but also particularly the hospitality industry. And so a lot of people often plan their travel around the festive season 
if not traveling, they they invite friends and family for you know parties and so on, so that they can spend time together. And uh, this time that will be different because uh, you know the pandemic has forced us to take it, governments have taken public health actions such as social distancing uh, just to you know break the transmission. And so uh, a lot of people this time, therefore expectation is that they will not travel and uh, you know even in cases where they've traveled they're planning to travel they they will have to you know make extraordinary plans in order to you know arrive in time and uh, to even tour some of the places that traditionally they would have toured so and so uh you know expect a lot of disruption and people just basically uh, remaining indoors and not having you know the large parties that are typical around uh festive seasons Mohammed Hamdi, you're in the hospitality industry. You know, the, the pyramids are usually a major attraction, particularly um, at, at this time, during this, this period. What is happening there now? There now, you know, to be honest, it's uh, the, the, the hospitality field, the, the tourist field, it's not, I mean, since, since almost four or five months, we had kind of five, 500,000 tourists only. You know, we, expect, we expected a lot much uh, in this time that uh, the last year in 2019 we, we received three, 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 30 million uh, tourists and we expected 50 million this year and the, the, f the first part of, of the year we received 2.5 million and since that time we had only 500,000 which is, which is really very little so that affects the whole, the whole thing. All right, uh, Femi Lawson? Okay, for Nigeria, the case is not uh, totally different from what you have across uh, the world. Um, the pandemic is really affecting everything in terms of uh, events that normally comes up during this season. We have a lot of uh, uh, events being cancelled and not coming up. And in the area of outband, we also have fewer people. Uh, going out of Nigeria for the holidays and for the festive season. But it's also uh, some kind of a plus for the hospitality industry and some very few uh, players in the tourism industry because you now you have uh, uh, the domestic uh, movement uh, increasing more, people booking local resorts and uh, hotels more now to engage and have fun during the festive season. So it's both ways you can say uh, for some some part of it, it's, uh, it's, uh, the impact is negative. Right. And some, so for some part of it, which is the domestic uh, tourism or inbound tourism is positive. David, I want to hear some practical examples, particularly the economic impact. David, would you say though that, that the pandemic is now going to change uh, the way people will be celebrating the festive season? Certainly it will. I mean, just looking at the, uh, the experience uh, of uh, the Thanksgiving holiday, for instance, uh, uh, in the US and where we have internet connectivity, a lot of people are preferring to not only hold uh, online uh, get togethers, uh, we've had the you know, Zoom parties and so forth, and even concerts which are being held uh, over online platform, social media platforms such as Facebook and Instagram and so forth. And so, uh, you know, people are indeed adapting uh, to the situation uh, and they're trying to find ways of being together with uh, close family members as well as friends uh, in spite of the social distancing uh, that is required over, over this period. Mohammed, I, I, I want to get your, your feeling here because um, there are a lot of restrictions still in place, particularly um, w w when it comes to physical distancing. During this festive season, it is a time to break bread, so to say, with family and friends. How is that aspect of human interactivity going to play out? What are people going to do if there are restrictions on numbers that can meet, on, on places that people can go? How is that going to work out, do you think? Okay, uh, let's make it simple. You know, life here in Egypt is very simple, and I'm talking almost about all Africa. Uh, celebrating is not is not is not is not something difficult to do. I mean, just a very light meal, you know, with candles or something can do it. So, since uh, stay home, stay safe is the main thing right now. So we we have to do it that way. So some of us take the chance, and as I told you, as I mentioned before, there is kind of 15 or 20 percent reservations in some hotels and these, these hotels decide to make this, 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 uh, 
this party or this, this, this uh, celebration for them. But some others decide to close because they cannot make it with this, this little amount of people. But again, celebration in Egypt it does not want to, doesn't have to be that, that big, that, that fancy. So this is the time everybody wants to celebrate. So we will celebrate it anyway because that, that's, that's how we do it. So I hope, I hope everything will get back to safe soon. D D David, uh, so of course, Mohammed has talked about people will have to celebrate. David, are you seeing any innovative ways that families are coming up with so that they can have some semblance of festivity? Uh, yeah, I mean, the, when you go on social media, you will see this, uh, you know, online parties and, all, and so forth, particularly uh, uh, by the younger generation. Certainly, they are more innovative around uh, internet and internet products and so and they are also more active on social media. And so around most of the activities are often uh, around social media, but typically now we are seeing uh, a movement away from holding indoor activities and so people would prefer perhaps to host uh you know uh, lawn parties and so forth um you know perhaps as a way to to adapt and still be with uh, their family and friends in a in a more responsible way uh, within the pandemic period and so the innovation is uh, is quite diverse um, um and so you you, you it's really um, uh, down to the creativity of individuals at, at this point Femi, are you seeing that as well in, in Nigeria, though, you know, the innovative aspect of it? Because Mohammed is talking about uh, people still finding ways to celebrate. Give us some practical examples, though, in Nigeria, what you're seeing in terms of innovation. Uh, well, yeah, uh, basically it's the new uh, normal that has been introduced now that we all have to uh, learn to uh, work with. But there are also very uh, unique way people are beginning to reduce the numbers but still um, uh, respect the social distancing policy and still have fun within the family and within few friends. Uh, that, that, that you can group with few friends around and you can go to places where you don't have to, like that's why large crowds like events are not holding. Uh, uh, in Nigeria at the moment, a lot of uh, very large crowd event that used to uh, happen this season is not coming up. But, but, but with that, you still have some very, uh, very few groups uh, planning to come, uh, come around here and there. So it's, um, and of course, the Zoom uh, platform technology has taken uh, uh, a new turn on everybody now. So uh, a lot of celebration also happen on Zoom now. You have Zoom clubbing and uh, you have Zoom party happening where uh, DJ will be somewhere and you connect on Zoom and you guys still, uh, uh, everybody still have fun. And the same thing with parties. So uh, in Nigeria, it's, it's more like, uh, it's, 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 it's a bit down, but it's, it's, it's uh, the, the creative technology is helping bring life um, into this festive period. I will hope to see that uh, as time goes on. I want to continue on, on, on that note, Femi, uh, the role of technology um, the, during this, this pandemic, because the African Centers for Disease Control released some guidelines to help travelers assess the risk, um, the risk level of uh, holiday celebrations. Now, these guidelines, one of them includes... Uh, where possible, connecting with family virtually, and of course not having too many family members uh, in, in any one gathering. I, in terms of the virtual aspect of it, do you see that working in an African setting? Yeah, it's, uh, it's actually a very good opportunity for Africa, for the continent, and uh, to promote uh, what uh, content in terms of destinations and in terms of events that happens in Africa. because. The technology gives you the opportunity to showcase uh, whatever event or destination you have to larger audience of people around the world, meaning that you are not just a uh, location uh, trap. You, like, uh, like, like we have what is called a virtual tourism, where you can travel Nigeria on VR without having to go on a plane or on a bus to go anywhere. You can just, from where you are, you can travel and still have the same fun that you enjoy at that uh, particular destination you have it on VR it's an immersive video and when you put it on it gives you that experience as if you are on that site uh, 
the only thing we are missing is the, the, the what we are used to right. uh, coming together physically. But now the, the policy and technology is helping us, giving us a new dimension, a new path, a new lifestyle to also do events without bringing everybody physically together, but connect with everybody technologically. David, I want to get your, your, your thoughts before you leave us because uh, we've heard about the travel and the hotel and retail sectors having been heavily hit during uh, this festive season. Which other sectors of the economy, if any, David, are you projecting to rebound after the pandemic? I think the most important sector that um, ought to come back online is the agricultural sector. We know that because of the pandemic, a lot of uh, supply chain uh, issues came in, um, just owing to you know the lack of transportation because people could not, people and goods could not travel in in good time. The uh, the impact that it had on international travel, including uh, cargo travel and so forth, really affected uh, you know uh, commodity exports, particularly in Africa and countries such as Kenya that rely so much on uh, you know export uh, driven growth and so uh, you know the auxiliary uh, uh, sectors around the agricultural sector such as agro industry and manufacturing um, you know with the ease with the easing and the with the facilitation that you know countries have taken in terms of initiatives to enhance uh, trade uh, expectation is that more opportunities will open up and the jobs that perhaps have been lost in those sectors will begin to go back online all right. Uh, on that note, we are going to take a short break. And when we come back, we're looking to how tourism and travel are affected across the continent. Stay tuned. Life moves pretty fast. Ideas move at the speed of sound. Technology moves at the speed of light. If you don't filter out the noise, you might miss the details. We pay attention to the details because they matter. Showing you a different perspective. See the difference. Welcome back to Talk Africa. Let's continue our discussion. Still with me in Cairo, Mohamed Hamdi, General Manager, Dominant Travel, and in Lagos, Femi Lawson, CEO, Skyview Communications. Mohamed, prior to the coronavirus outbreak, I want to look at some figures uh, of the tours and travel industry because the travel industry uh, was thriving, growing year on year with international arrival surging to 1.5 billion in 2019 according to the un world travel organization now how is the travel and hotel industry coping uh, what coping mechanisms are in place because you have mentioned uh, previously that uh, you know the last uh, few months in egypt particularly has been very difficult how are you, how are you adapting to the current situation to keep profitable as I mentioned before, you know, the last few months were a little bit difficult. So uh, we, we started to have our precautions, you know, and the, the instructions of the Ministry of Antiquities and Tourism, you know, they have done a really great job of doing this. So we, and we, you know, we have a, a real uh, success uh, the last few months. We have, as I mentioned before, 500,000. Uh, guests were here in Egypt and uh, we have no record of anything uh, all of them get back safe there is there was no n none of them had a coronavirus or something so the precautions you no know, the sanitizing masks social distancing we're taking care of all of this uh, as a part of uh, from our part uh, as a travel company you know we, we take care of this you know we provide all these kind of things to our guests and uh, all the other partners do the same like the hotels the airlines everything so so we hope we hope we hope that this this kind of uh, 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 instructions this kind of uh, uh, of uh, rules will, will will get much much better and will we will, will recover soon as I hope what are you seeing though Mohammed in terms of what people are cutting back on what is the one uh, uh, single aspect 
of the holiday season that most people are now cutting back on? Okay, you know, it's, uh, as I mentioned before, it's it's a little bit, bit difficult. So some some hotels already closed. They, they they couldn't they couldn't take it anymore since since almost six or seven months now without any work. Some of them are still still working on this, you know, and the government su subsidize support those 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 workers. But still, you know, we need we need to work. So we I think we we need to to adapt with with the, with this pandemic because it it, it looks like. We still we still have a little bit of time to, to to get back to normal. So some 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 of them try uh, had to shift shift their careers to something else to to you know find their their own source of living. But uh, most of them, which is about forty percent or something or fifty percent, trying to handle it till now, and it it's, it still works. But we need to recover fast as soon as as possible. Femi, what are you seeing though? What aspect uh, of, of the celebrations are you seeing many people cutting back on this festive season? Okay, uh, ba basically uh, a lot. Uh, one major aspect that is very glaring that you can see from this part of the world is that there is a, a, a reduction in um, outbound travel. That means international travel because of the travel ban and policies that is being introduced because of the pandemic around the world. So there is a reduction in people uh, going out of Nigeria for holiday like uh, it used to be. Uh, that's a major part that has been affected now. A lot of people are not uh, traveling the way they would have uh, uh, done or the way they usually do around, uh, uh, the, around the world. Uh, but. Um, to the local to the inbound or local tourism is an advantage because it, it's helping uh, the, the the pandemic in a way is also an opportunity to position africa at uh, for africa to sell itself with it uh, with the destination and travel opportunities and tourism investment opportunities that exist because before now you the attention is on the developed world and the leading uh, uh, travel market in the world and uh, because the the reduction in uh, people traveling out of Africa now it, it's an opportunity for the industry to actually grow domestically by growing the numbers locally. Mohammed, give us your projections though in, in terms of uh, because you're uh, in the travel industry and you're hoping uh, for the best post pandemic give us your projections uh, when you will see uh, you know the best coming out of the festive season what are you likely to see when are you likely to completely rebound okay so it I, you know i believe it will take uh, as i mentioned before a little bit time to to recover but the good thing is we had a very nice experience the last few months with our with, with our guests so i think this is this is how we how we should do it we should we should continue working we should uh, uh, we should uh, do our best to, to make it much better uh, and we have all the support from from our our ministry from our our president it's, it's they are doing their best so i hope i hope soon we we can recover soon because you know there is not not much tourists you know you cannot uh, you cannot you cannot do do, do this uh, easily so so I, I believe i believe it will take a little bit of time but it will be much much better Femi, apart from the travel, hotel, and retail sectors, uh, what other sectors are uh, heavily affected during this period? Well, uh, uh, of course, you, 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 the travel industry is well affected, the aviation industry, and of course, uh, local transport and um, uh, businesses generally, both in the financial sector and um, uh, communication. And uh, almost all the sectors are affected, really. Uh, but it's just the, 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 the quantum or the, the level of um, the uh, issue because the, 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 the is a circle, is a, is a value chain. If one is not working well, it definitely affects the other. So I think uh, it affects all the industries generally, but majorly aviation, tourism, travel and tourism is majorly affected. But it's affecting every other industry. Look at the let's take education, for example. Some schools are still closed down and um, uh, some private school have been affected too that uh, they cannot uh, run the way they used to run and because children have to stay back home and um, you talk about if they are not working you talk about the uh, road transport 
that's that's another big uh, big uh, industry that is uh, uh, affected. So it's affecting all other industries, not just to mention uh, one or two. It's affecting everybody, all the sectors. Mohammed, uh, so apart from the travel, let me hear your view here. Apart from the travel and the hotel and the retails, which are the sectors are you finding in Egypt particularly uh, that are really affected during the season? Mainly, mainly, uh, mainly tourism field is the one who mostly affected with this. But it's not the only, the only field. I mean, uh, it, it, it was a, a very difficult time for all of us, uh, not, not only, only, only tourists. But for, for us, it was much, much stronger because, you know, uh, our source of living depends on, on traveling, depends on, depends on hospitality fields. So no traveling, no business for us. Uh, other sectors, you know, might not affect that, that much, that bad. But for us, it's, it's completely, it's completely uh, big thing, you know, not, not to have work. Uh, I mean, other, other industries might be affected like 50%, 40%, but for us it's almost 100%, which is, which is, really, which is really difficult for us. So that's, that's why with these, these uh, precautions, with these things, you know, we hope to start traveling again. We hope to start our business again, which is, will be good for all of us. All right, uh, Mohammed. I want to get a final comment from you because in uh, times like this, there are lessons that are bound to be learned from these events. If they do occur again, what would be your recommendation? What could be done better? And in your view, will do you think holidays will be the same again? Uh, I, I hope soon it will be it will be good again. But our recommendations, it, every, everybody's recommendation. I mean, like keep social distancing, be, keep your max, masks on. Uh, sanitize yourself all the time and keep traveling keep keep we cannot cannot stay here stay home more than this it, it's it's uh, it's part of our life now it's part of our life now we have to adapt with this with this pandemic uh, so I think I think we should we should go forward we should move on so we will take our precautions then we will move forward that's it all right uh, Femi your thoughts if events like this occur again what could we do better Basically, uh, I think uh, we need to, of course, in Africa, work on uh, 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 the medical and health sector needs a lot of attention. We can do that in to, to, because we, we are meant to have a lot of opportunities. And I, I think we also need to have a, a very good media to speak for the, Afri the, the, the continent because is also an opportunity to sell, to sell the continent to the world uh, in terms of positioning the continent as an asset to the travel and tourism industry because Africa is uh, greatly blessed in terms of uh, tourism destinations and opportunities. And, but ironically, uh, not much of African content or African assets are known to the world. So I think uh, when th st things like this happen, it's also an opportunity for Africa to speak out and uh, make known the opportunities that exist in Africa. And of course, uh, uh, assurance that, uh, that medical assurance that um, you are sure that when you travel to Africa, you, you'll be safe and you'll be sound in case anything happens. And um, of course, it's also an opportunity to grow internally because uh, getting attention. Uh, all of this has batted a lot of opportunities for Africa in terms of developing African content for Africans. So uh, I, it will be a great thing for Africans to look inward and see how we can partner to grow the continent and sell Africa in a better way. All right, uh, Femi, we leave it there for the moment, but thank you all uh, for your time. That's all we have time for on this edition of Talk Africa. A big thank you to our panel of experts via Zoom in Nairobi, David Owiro, Executive Director, Africa Development Think Tank. In Cairo, Mohamed Hamdi, General Manager, Dominant Travel, and in Lagos, Femi Lawson, CEO, Skyview Communications. Remember, you can be a part of this conversation online through Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And do join us again next week for more on Talk Africa. I'm Beatrice Marshall. Until next time, goodbye.